Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, I'd like to start, uh, before I introduce our distinguished speaker, I'd like to start by acknowledging the sponsor of tonight's lecture, Dave Jepson. Uh, as a result of his generous support, our yearly lecture series, we've been fortunate to bring some of the most brilliant architects from around the world to our school. Uh, from an educational perspective, that represents an invaluable asset and an opportunity for which we are very grateful. Uh, Dave is actually with us tonight, and would you please stand to be recognized? Dave Jepson. It's okay. This is a, this is going to be a hot lecture. Well, uh, it's a great honor to introduce tonight's speaker, the distinguished Wolf Prex. Every so often, a radical architect emerges on the scene from one era to the next that distinguishes themselves in the history of our discipline. Um, it might start with a visionary sketch, a theoretical design that we've never seen before, a manifesto that boldly challenges the status quo of its time. In this case, uh, I think it's fair to say that Wolf Pricks has been accused of operating successfully on all three levels at the same time in the early part of his career. As one of the co-founders of Coop Himmelblau, in 1968, the work that emerged during that era was bold, beautiful, and radically projective as it brought to life in any way possible an architecture of weightlessness, flight, and a new world order catapulted forward as pure energy. In those early years, there were inflatable capsules that were suspended like strange biological creatures grafted onto the outside of buildings. There were surreal, transparent, gelatinous helmets that accessorized the body in anticipation of a future of transhumanist modifications and even a brilliant lattice cloud set aflame in the sky in celebration of his legendary manifesto, Architecture Must Burn. Always in the forefront of the avant-garde, Wolf's research, experimentation, and built works throughout his career have been simultaneously critical in that they have aggressively challenged the accepted practices of their time and yet at the same time elegantly persuasive on the highest level from a design perspective given his unique and masterful control as one of the few visionary architects today capable of moving abstract ideas forward seamlessly as beautifully constructed buildings. More recently, the work has assumed heroic status in that the early rebel is now building some of the most extraordinary examples of architecture in the 21st century around the world. Projects such as Busan Cinema Center in Busan, Korea, uh, Dalian's International Conference Center in Dalian, China, the European Central Bank Building in Frankfurt, Germany, and the BMW Building in Munich, Germany, represent as just a small sample of great works in his portfolio, an architect that has rightfully achieved international acclaim for moving poetry into action, as each of these buildings has become a cultural magnet in their respective locations. Uh, with respect to his distinguished background, Wolf Prick studied architecture in Vienna University of Technology, the Architectural Association of London, and SciArc in Los Angeles. Uh, most formative among his many international teaching positions was his tenure at the University of Applied Arts in Vienna, and he certainly made history there. From 1993 to 2011, he was the professor for architecture, Studio Prex and stepped down from his position as vice chancellor of the Institute of Architecture in 2012. From 1995 to 1997, Wolf Pricks was a member of the Architectural Committee in the Austrian Federal Ministry of Science, Research, and the Arts. He is a member of the Austrian Art Senate and the European Academy of Sciences and Arts, as well as the Advisory Committee for Building Culture. Additionally, Wolf Pricks is a member of the Architectural Association Austria, Union of German Architects, BDA in Germany, the Architectural Union Santa Clara in Cuba, the Royal Institute of British Architects, RIBA, the American Institute of Architects, AIA, and the Architectural Association Italy. In 2006, he was the commissioner of the Austrian contribution for the 10th International Exhibition of the Venice Biennale. He has received numerous awards, including the award of the City of Vienna for Architecture, 
the award to the German Architecture Prize, the Great Austrian State Award, three times the New Yorker Progressive Architecture Award, the French Award, Order of Arts and Letters, as well as the gold medal for his contribution to the federal state of Vienna. He's received the Annie Spink Award for Excellence in Architectural Education for his commitment to teaching and training. The Jenks Award, Vision's Built Prize for his major contribution to the theory and practice of architecture. In May 2009, federal uh, president Dr. Heinz Fischer bestowed the Austrian Decoration of Honor for Science and Art on Wolf Pricks for his outstanding creative achievements. In 2011, he was honored with the honorary citizenship of the city of Busan, South Korea. In closing, as a leading architect for the last 45 years, Wolf Pricks has been an invaluable creative and design force in our profession. And we, as a community, owe him an extraordinary amount of gratitude and thanks for his visionary contribution throughout his remarkable career. It is therefore my honor and with great pleasure that I welcome Wolf Pricks here tonight. Wolf. Thank you very Thank much. You. I Thank appreciate you. that. <laughs> Thank you so much for this excellent speech. <laughs> but I have to admit, I can, I can take a lot of praise. <laughs> more, more. <laughs> I'm sorry to say that, I'm, uh, that I lost my voice between Frankfurt and New York. And therefore, I compiled a lecture which speaks for itself. Uh, a lot of texts uh, which I normally would read, now you can read it by yourself, music and some Im images of the projects. Maybe my voice will break down in the middle of the lecture, then maybe my partner can continue. <laughs> okay. This means Himmelblau. In translation, Himmelblau means sky blue, but sky blue is not a color, it's the idea of having architecture buoyant like clouds. Don't worry, in two days, tomorrow is, will be yesterday. What does that mean? If you, as an architect, only designs for tomorrow, in two days, your project or your building will, out of, will be out of fashion. That means you have to grab wider, at least 10 years, because our projects uh, eat uh, seven years of my and of our life until they are finished, from the very beginning to the very end. So we try to be more futuristic than seven years, meaning we try to, uh, to aim 20 years. If we talk about architecture nowadays, we are talking only about the building which is visible. We don't talk and we don't think about the invisible architecture that is politics, uh, codes and rules of our society, and even the fashion of aesthetics. Architecture is heavy. Weight costs money, and where money is, is politic. So as an architect, we have to uh, invent strategies to break these codes and rules in order to get new methods and new ideas down or up in the future. Two examples. On the left side, this is a painting of Icarus. I don't know whether you know Icarus. It was a Greek hero 
who invented uh, wings in order to fly. The wings were uh, glued, feather, feather wings were glued with wax. He tried to fly higher than everyone and he came close to the sun and the sun burned the wax. If he would have used silicon, <laughs> you know what I mean? So material, new materials are very important in our profession as well. Don't believe the building industry. Building industry is stupid. If the car industry would be uh, like the building industry, we would ride horses. We would still ride horses instead of driving cars. I always wanted to finish the Tower of Babel. Uh, that's a hard job. And so we started at the very beginning with a detail of this painting with the cloud. It looked like this, it was 68. We were dreaming of architecture without columns. Material air was filling the volume of bigger than life and movable platform could be arranged in every situation. What I would like you to show now is Kohl Himmelblau's life in four minutes. The music is from the Rolling Stones, and the title is Give Me Shelter. Uh, we are building for a complex society, for an open society. And how to describe an open society, which is based basically on the philosophical movement of enlightenment 250 years ago in Europe, and the topic of this movement was self determination of every person. It was directed against authoritarian thinking and codes and rules. So how can we explain it? Just by compare a Stone Age hunter with a traveler on an airport. The Stone Age hunter just following one track of the deer he wants to hunt. The traveler in the airport has to follow the right, the, the way to the right gate at the right time to the right airplane, which brings him to the right city. So the short description of an open system is everybody is right, but nothing, really nothing is correct. In this content. The question is very important. important. What is architecture? The answer is yes. <laughs> or the other way around, what's the difference? Everyone knows, hopefully, this painting from Michelangelo. But nowadays, we would paint it in a different way. 
we would paint it like this. <laughs> or like this. Private and pub, the, the topic of and designing of private and public space is in the forefront of our work in our office. Empty public space, full public space, public space like this, or this is the best description of private and public, or like this. I know that we, the young architects, uh, trying to redefine this public space by replacing the physical address by the media. But if we are thinking about two intensive So we have to redefine the physical address, not by, only by the media, but also by new shapes and forms. And I would like it gestalt. Uh, we are doing a research now where we compare the growing of our brain or the way of thinking in our brain with the movement in the cities in order to find new attractors, which are the point of departure of a new development. But to be honest, if I talk to non-architects, no, uh, I feel like I'm in an ivory tower uh, and no one can hear me. Basically, this is the face of every architect. But if you... <laughs> If you read the critics, <laughs> the crits, then you, it, the crits look, in the New York Times, they look like the uh, fishes night song. But we have to admit that mediocrity knows no respect. So therefore, we have to have seven lives in order to survive all these uh, constraints. The first life is enough is not enough. We want, we have to want more. And I'm proud to announce that one of my uh, polemic statements was read by Che Guevara. Es un símbolo para todos los pueblos oprimidos. Raya Girón es la primera derrota del imperialismo en América Latina pero también es una de las primeras derrotas del imperialismo en escala mundial. I have to say that we got building permit for this blazing wing. This is one of the tricks you have to learn to get through with all these ideas. Because radical architecture is not only radical drawing or radical thinking, it's radical building, getting through with your ideas. Architecture is not surface, it's content. Everyone knows Lady Gaga. But do you know a song of Lady Gaga? You know his clothes or his, uh, her body. But if architecture becomes like that, green trees on the balcony, then I would call it Lady Gaga aesthetic. For me, architecture, for us, for our team, architecture is the synergy between content and form. Uh, not um, form follows function, 
and not uh, function follows form, but it's really the synergy between both of them, and then it gets gestalt. We have to know that we are, uh, all architects are the best architects of the world, but uh, you have to know that nowadays architecture is a team game. And even then, we try to invent other stra strategies, because if we all only think about architecture, only architecture will come out. Uh, the situation of the architects nowadays is like this. You can see the client in the background. And if you don't redefine your profession in the next future, your office will be empty like this gas station in the desert. What we are doing, we studied the, the, the strategy of the soccer team FC Barcelona because it seemed to me, and I figured out it's correct, it seemed to me that the how this team is playing, we are designing. Namely, we're building up a very straightforward system, which is almost a closed system, and then someone breaks the whole system and by breaking the system, new chances and new possibilities show up, like in the soccer play of Barcelona. You can see they are playing this so-called tiki-taki triangle game, and then Messi comes in, destroys the whole system, and creates by chance new possibilities, unforeseeable new possibilities. How does the, this black dot come on the, on, the, on the wing of a butterfly? Do you think by parametric design or it's by chance? It's trial and error, and this is the open system as well. For me, complexity is all together, plan, section, view, and detail, because our society is a complex society. It gets more and even more complex. And complex societies have uh, complex uh, problems. And complex problems require complex solution. Complex solution are very, very hard to understand, uh, but always new. Simple solution which are authoritarian solutions mostly, are easy to understand, but they are never new. And the sixth life is, we have to remember that when the grid is vanishing, Gestalt, if there is a Gestalt, still remains. And seventh, take your time, but not too long. I show you a good example. This cross punch strategy of uh, Cassius Clay, Muhammad Ali, is a very good city planning um, strategy because he spots the problem before it is a problem and solves uh, the problem before it's a big problem. So this is the way we are thinking about uh, planning cities uh, in a complex way. Architecture 2,500 years ago looked like this. Now architecture looks like this. And this is not only because of the shape or form, it's also because of the structure. This temple, the historic temple, 500 BC, has, needs 36 columns to lift up a roof with 1,300 square meter. The BMW project needs only 11 columns to lift up a roof 10 times the size, uh, 14,000 square meter, or compare this icon of architecture, 
with the icon of architecture today? If I would say that the black volume is the architecture and the white is the program, so now it is. The black would be white and the white <laughs> would be black. Um, form and content, in my point of view, makes gestalt. Example, look at this beautiful bird, a lot of details. It's a falcon. The prey of the falcon is a goose. The goose doesn't see the falcon in his whole gestalt. It sees only a cross. So, if you minimize your formal language too much, the danger is that you have the point of a view of a goose. I'm going for this kind of architecture. I show you some form gestalt in our work. I think this was the first or one of the first built deconstructivist architectural project. I'm going through very quickly. Um, in the late 80s, early 90s, we started to, um, to experiment with the computer. And out came this kind of gestalt. And we developed this gestalt up to the newest project. It's a resort in China where a roof uh, bridges over a pit. And the program is a resort. It's a ski resort and, and a, a pool resort, a combination of both. So, I give you a short backstage uh, secret. We are working in order to get this kind of gestalt with the space arm, with kind of dynamic forces, studying the dynamic force, in, and put it in the computer and make a shape out of it. Then we digitize in order the, the whole uh, project in order to make it buildable. We are experimenting with movies. This is a movie we, uh, for, for the BMW uh, study. We, we, we did it in order to, to get a closer image of the reality. This is how we build it. We are experimenting with music. This is an, uh, a music pavilion in Munich. We uh, created a, uh, a surface by the spikes, which is consuming the sound around the building so that we have a good acoustic inside. And the, the shape of the spikes and the size of the spikes were defined by two music pieces, the Jimi Hendrix, excuse me while I kiss the sky, and Mozart's Don Giovanni. Both of these uh, pieces are, I love very much. We never showed this to the client, I have to say. But uh, we always interpreted it as a, 
acoustical technical shape. Uh, we are doing 3D scans of physical models. And uh, recently we start to work with the uh, robot because I think this is the next step in building uh, radical ideas. And if the building industry would take it, uh, we would be able to build in a very economic way, very complex things. This is one of my favorite sculpture. It's a sculpture of Brancusi. It shows what I mean if I, I'm talking about open, um, uh, open forms, open systems because it's a combination of many systems. It's not one parametric design. It's not a single surface design. It's a combination of all of this. And the other thing is never trust a scientific statement because this is the moon of the Mars, Phoebus. He's turning around the, the uh, Mars against all calculation in different way. So what we did, it was the Viennese words, Dona Walzer. We combined the shape of the, uh, of this uh, moon with the shape of a dolphin and we created a piece which will be built in the middle of a, of a project. Uh, two muse museums uh, in Shenzhen. So, as you can see, it's the heart of these two museums. It's, it's the space in between, and it's articulated in a very special way. This shape becomes a building as well. It was the, the proposal for the uh, big uh, Museum for Modern Art in Beijing. Uh, the concept was a three-dimensional Chinese garden. And not by chance, this, uh, I show these two images. Uh, that, that's complicated to explain. Himmel Blau, if you leave out, if you erase the L, uh, Himmelblau sky blue means uh, to build the sky. And Bauwerke means building. If I erase uh, the L from, Bau, uh, Bau, or if I put the L from Himmelblau into the uh, Bauwerk building, then it turns the buildings into blue. So I like breaking the ground because this is the moment where thought, the thought become reality. What I'm doing now, I show you the, the project we have under construction. This is the European Central Bank, the, the, the center, the headquarter of the European Central Bank. And by this very simple geometric move, we created a new geom geometry for this building, which is very important for uh, the identity. Every good building 
which is uh, which you can identify, which is an icon, has a very special and very very new geometry. This is the program of the building. We cut it with a sliced cut. Uh, so on the inside, the um, uh, show up um, HP surfaces. The, the advantage of HP surfaces uh, that they are created by straightforward lines. So if we turn it around, this uh, HP surfaces to the outside, which is, uh, makes it very identifiable, the building, and the, the, the glass facade consists, uh, exists out of straightforward glass panels. And this is how it looks like. The city planning idea was to create a second center. Uh, the advantage of this uh, curved facade is that you have a, a bigger view, so to say, and that you get sun on the north side as well. Show you some images from the building process. As you can see, the, the, this point is cantilevering 30 meters. It's leaning to the outside. Here you can see. The structure inside uh, is, you could compare with, uh, with a Gothic cathedral, very complex structure. But the advantage is that we could use the, the, the structure as a connection, as a physical connection between the two slabs, meaning people can move from one slab to the other, office slab in a very un, uh, easy way. This is not the Serpentine Gallery, it's the building process in the atrium, in the 50 meter high atrium. The other project which will be finished next year is the music school, concert hall uh, and music school. It's uh, it derived from the idea of water because it's close to um, the, the river bank. As you can see, the topic of waves and maybe air bubbles are going through the whole uh, building. The windows to the concert hall are a visual connection for the students, so the students could uh, not only listen, but also seeing the, the concert. This is how it will look like next year when it's finished. Looking forward to listen to the first concert. It will be Mozart. They promised me the Jupiter. Jupiter Symphony. As you can see, this is uh, this light bubble. That is like like air bubbles in the in the water. These are the windows where people can watch the rehearsal of the orchestra. The other project we have on on site and should be finished next year as well is the Natural History Museum in Lyon, France. It took us 10 years, but to fight politics and stupid uh, contractors. But now it's going ahead. And this is the concept. Um, it's on a peninsula and uh, where it's a beautiful site. And we didn't want to, to block the, the way from the fabric of the city to the nature. So we lifted up the, the building so people can walk underneath. Coming up, coming up, coming up. G 
just to give you a detail. This is a shape I like very much. And we started to build it as a structure. It's the beginning, and now it looks like that. Actually, it is a column. It's a, I would say it's a dissolved column. And it, it saves th one third of the st uh, weight of the steel structure. By creating this column, we could save one third of the budget for the uh, uh, lobby. Another detail. It's always fine to, to, to design details like that, but it's much better to see it in reality. Another topic in our office is the roof, the development of a roof. We started very early to think about the roof not as an architectural element but an architecture uh, for protection, but an architectural element with, uh, with a meaning like Corbusier did it. Yeah? The roof of the... Um, uh, Unité in Marseille is not, it's not a roof for protection, it's a landscape. Or the Nima's house, the roof of Nima's house doesn't follow the ground plan. It's a free sculptured frame for looking out into the landscape. And we thought about the roof of the BMW building the same way. It's nothing else but the reverse the uh, unité landscape. And it looks like that. Actually, it's a, a new definition of a public space. It's not a, not a presentation for cars. It's really a public space. There are cars. You can look at cars as well, but there are restaurants, um, restaurants, exhibition spaces. Um, event spaces, a little opera pavilion as well, with a roof. You mentioned that the Busan uh, building is another uh, contribution to the topic of a roof, not being an um, element for protection against rain. It's a public space as well. The function is uh, to be uh, the, the place where the Asian movie festival can celebrate itself. Stars are coming up, showing their newest movie. There is a movie mountain, so to say, with movies, and a theater, multifunctional theater. There is a uh, school for... Uh, Student, uh, movie students, and there is an open air cinema for 6,000 people. Two roofs are, are covering the, 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 the public space, and the double cone is nothing else but the, um, the red carpet zone for the Asian movie stars. The roof itself. Uh, is the longest cantilevering uh, roof of the world. It's can, it cantilevers 85 meters. But while constructing the roof, we got to know that the codes, the wind codes changed. Instead of um, being fixed for the typhoon with 150 miles, we had to consider that now the structure must hold 200 miles, uh, 200 miles per hour typhoon. So what to do? Dismantle the whole thing, calculate it new, and reassemble it, very complicated. What we did is we introduced here a column, which is hidden in the uh, basement, and then if the wind gets stronger than 150 miles, the column comes up and holds it from flying <laughs> away. So I have to say, don't believe if someone says architecture is clever. 
clever is the architect. So some images. This is the roof, which is, of course, a projection, a horizontal projection um, um, screen. And the, the space itself is very lively. This is the beginning of the open air movie. And this is how it looks when the whole thing is going ahead. <laughs> now we are moving to China, to Dalian, where the big projects are coming up. This is the site of the Dalian Conference Center. Dalian is, is uh, east of Beijing. As you can see, these are the four cities we, have. we are working on projects right now. This is the development area of the um, uh, conference center. It was a competition uh, which we luckily won. And this is not only a conference center, because we had to add an opera in the middle of the building. So it's a, a, a hybrid building, there are ex exhibition spaces, cultural events for opera and conference center, of course. These are the shape generating forces. On the left side, the, the city planning, the urban grid uh, directions which shaped the building. And on the right side, you could see the, the wind, which is a main issue in the whole city. And the concept was, this is the city with the existing streets. We actually, we enlarged the streets. And in this tri triangle, we placed this new cultural conference center with the opera in the middle. This was the master plan, so, so to say, and this is the master plan for the building. We had to arrange 36 conference center for very small to very large one, and we decided to place the main conference centers on the level plus 15 so that we get an urban space which is surrounding uh, the conference center and the opera. So this is the program, yellow are the conference center and in the middle, the opera building. And because we were refined on the building side and we needed more volume, we pushed out the, uh, the conference centers and got a very special skin, a spe very special facade like this. This, once again, is the, the program, Opera Building um, Conference, seven conference um, halls, auditoriums, placed around a public space. Yeah. This was the first model, and you can see the pop-outs, how they deformed the, tri the, the triangle shape of the uh, ground plan. Here you can see what I mean. This blue one is the, the, the public space where the conference auditoriums and the opera is placed like buildings 
in a little city. It is planned to house 6,000 people as a small town in, in China. Um, in our country, in Austria, 6,000 is a middle uh, placed city. This is how the plants look like in China. Not so different from our drawings. And this is what I said. This is the opera building. These are the conference halls. And these are the exhibition spaces. It was very complicated. The opera, the, 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 the design for the opera was complicated because of, because of the acoustical reasons. We had to uh, design an opera which works with electroacoustic uh, issues and with a normal singer acoustic. So therefore, uh, we studied it very intensely with our acoustical engineer. And the shape derived actually from these acoustical constraints. To build this enormous big uh, structure was an experience I really like, especially because it was not that easy. And as you can see, but the uh, digital, uh, digital um, PIM model helped us you know, to get through with all these ideas. Of course, we are always working with models. And the models uh, show us how it will look like in uh, reality on one hand, and it gives us the structure on the other hand as well. Without computer and without the BIM model, uh, building information modeling, no no way to build it in this short time we did. It was planned and built in three years. The energy design was is very complex as well. We decided not to make a black box because that would consume a lot of energy by using artificial light. We wanted to, uh, we created a, a glass box with different shapes of louvers, seawater cooling, and so forth, and so forth. This is craftsmanship, uh, which I don't talk too much about it because every architect should know how that goes. But what we did is that we used the wind as a cooling uh, system. Um, Therefore, we opened some parts of the building. Then we used the sun in order to support the heating and so forth and so forth. Therefore, a lot of different parts of the facade were designed. This is the model. This is the reality. And this is the, how the building starts. And I have to say, Corbusier gave us the advice that we should build buildings like ships. We did it. Some of the, some of the part, some of the parts of the structure, were done in a shipyard, because they were the only guys who could weld 10 centimeter steel. Perfect way. We did it long time ago. This was a museum or a Kunsthalle built in a shipyard in Groningen, and this was recently. Uh, built um, a roof built in a shipyard. I show you later. This is back to Italian. You can see the enormous size of the building, and not by chance the construction site looked like uh, my favorite drawing of Piranesi. And this is how it looked when it was finished. You can see the pop-outs, the conference hall, pushing the envelope of the facade, and the different, the opening and closing, letting the wind going through, bringing the sun into, into the building, or keeping it out, and giving view to the public, uh, to the public 
to the, from the inside to the outside. The entrance is an enormous cantilevering as well, it makes the whole thing very dynamic. Here you can see the different shapes of the lively facade. It's the cantilevering, the, the actually the, audit, uh, the, the lobby to the opera looks to the sea. Here you, you could see the, no, you see the people in the forefront taking photographs, just to give you the impression of the size. I like the winter time in China, like this, for example. Inside the opera building, to the right side and to the left side, there are the uh, conference halls. And you can see this is almost like a small city. Inside, it's 60 meters high. And uh, bridges, ramps, and stairs are going crisscross and defining the space in a very special way. Oh, I liked it very much. You can see the, 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 the size. <laughs> yeah, and, and this big lobby had a, had a very special uh, roof ceiling, we had light incomes like tubes here, but we painted the inside of the light tubes gold. So if the sun is shining through or the light comes through, the metal image of the uh, surface of the inside gets very smooth like fabric. This is the inside of the opera. Rehearsal. You can see a lot of seemingly sculptured things. They are only there because of the acoustic. It's a very good excuse for making sculptural architecture if you find a technical reason to present it to the client. This is the opening and the architect in the middle of two Chinese beauties. This is when it was opened that we can build also very small projects. i show you on this example. Look at this size comparison. This is a church in my hometown, far away from Vienna. Not far away, not so far away from Vienna. This is the Danube, and this is my contribution to my hometown. It was, it's a protest. Protestantic, yeah, Protestantic church with a, a more or less small prayer room, 64, 8 by 8 meters, but with, with this very special roof. All the other facilities like this are given by the client. It's a community hall, and these are is the apartment for the priest. This is how it looked before, and this is when we finished it. This is the prayer room. It's a square with a very special roof, and the needle is the bell tower. The priest uh, loved to see that it's higher than all the other buildings around. This is my secret, as maybe you know, I love Corbusier, and there's a lot of references to Rochon and to the light tubes of La Tourette. Next to, the, next to this church is a very old medieval Gothic building, 
And what we did, we took the geometry of the curve of the old roof and we modeled it into contemporary uh, shapes. Looked like this. And then we did a model and changed it a little bit by hand so that a lot of new things arrived. And then it looked like that. And the difference to The difference to the chapel of Corbusier is that the roof is going through the ceiling. Corbusier's light tubes end, end at the ceiling. Our light tubes, snakes are, are breaking through and distort the, the ceiling like this. As I said, we did it in a, in, in a shipyard far away from Hamburg, my hometown, 1,000 kilometers away. We transported it on two big trucks, and then we welded it together, and the grain lifted it up. Of course, stairways to heaven. This is how it looks like now. The old church and the new one. Baroque church and new Baroque church. <laughs> little one, big one, little one. As, uh, but the making of these tubes is very interesting. You have to imagine the form derived from a medieval shape, uh, medieval roof. It was done in a very medieval way to build that's reed. We found a guy who, who could do the precise uh, way in order to, to make it uh, the shape very precise. We found a, a guy who could do it. And so it was done it was derived from a, the roof was derived from a very old um, form. It was done in a very medieval uh, way, and and in between there was the computer. And this is how it looks like. The other reference is how to place the roof on the wall. You can see on the left image. Miss van der Rohe. He placed the roof very stupidly on the wall. Corbusier introduced a joint out of, made of light. So what you can see here that we quote both of them. On the left side, Corbusier. On the right side, a little bit distorted, uh, Miss van der Rohe. And another quote is, um, the movement of sand in the desert, we placed it on the outside of the facade. And even the altar was done according to the um, geometry of the old roof. But it looks very differently. So, the, uh, at the very end, uh, anticipation of the future. What I like on this quote is, it's from Herman uh, Melville's Moby Dick, that he describes the wish that the wind should have a body, and this, for my interpretation, is the best uh, way to talk about architecture. The wind has a body. So the future of architecture is of course, no gravity, 
therefore no columns building hanging in the sky and we have no gravity and if we don't have gravity we don't need a mono central perspective anymore and not by chance not by chance if you lie on the couch of of this chair of Kobe C you take the same position like the astronauts take when they overcome gravity. Structures generated by music. What you will see is the structure of the roof of BMW and interpreted by sound. Sooner or later, we will be able to, con uh, to create the structure out of the sound in the re reversed way. First sound and then the structure. And when I heard the solo of Keith Richard in Gimme Shelter, and you will hear it in seconds, watch out the last tone he's playing. And I always imagined this should be a material. Uh, transparent like glass, tough like concrete, and soft like I speak. And Keys played it on a very special guitar, five, only five string, and the body of the guitar was made out of plastic. Watch out. And imagine that we can build with this material. Once again. So, and the function of our brain is the role model of the city of the future. This is nothing else but a three um, um, spatial master plan, three dimensional master plan. So, and at the very end, I show you a poem done by Bob Dylan, which describes what I think about. Thank you very much. You were talking about how Icarus should have used silicon instead of wax. <laughs> and then going with your buildings, like how the one building, its roof, you 
thought of that if the wind was getting too hard, you should have you just added a column in. Now, in relation, when did you think it was time to use silicon? It was time for the architecture world to use silicon instead of wax and make these new ideas. I don't know when silicon was invented, but I I have to tell you that without silicon, you will never get the the buildings nowadays safe and sound. <laughs> Is this an answer? I don't know another answer. Sir, he lost his voice as well. Um, this is him. I'm sorry I lost my voice. <laughs> this young gentleman. <laughs> I'm sorry I've lost my voice, but I have a question about FC Barcelona. Do you think that the new addition of Neymar will bring down or enhance the team with Messi already carrying the team? So you relate this to your outlook on how you work. Do you think he will help or hinder the process of breaking the rules? Messi? Well, what is the question? <laughs> Try it. I, I, I did um, it as well. The way I see it is the way you organize your studio based on... No, 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 no. Look, at, um, if you are starting a project, you have to, get, to, to, to think very straightforward. Building size, program, site, and so forth. But then you need another point of view in order to break all these constraints in order to get a new idea uh, introduce a new concept, like the church. Yeah? It, it's easy to build a church like a, a house next to the existing house. But then it was quite clear, six, eight to eight meters is the prayer room. But then I, I was standing there and I saw this old uh, medieval bone house with this curve. And I said, OK, why don't we transfer this curve into a contemporary a roof. Understandable? Try it. Next time you should try it by yourself. <laughs> the teacher says you have to uh, make eight columns, try it with one. See, this is what Messi is doing. By breaking the rules, by breaking the rules, there's a chance to get new concept. Understandable? So if I would say that the last um, uh, three-dimensional master plan was, is nothing else but the energy lines in three dimension as a master plan. Not a master plan in one level, but a master plan in, in many levels. This is breaking the rules of a master plan. Yeah. Or, or the other thing is, when we did the rooftop very early in the, in the 80s, this area was uh, strictly uh, prohibited by the Landmark Society. You couldn't change, you are, we are not allowed to change the roof pit or the, the, the materials, nothing. We went to the mayor and he said, what is this? And I said, it's art. And he said, of course, it couldn't be architecture, it doesn't look like architecture, it must be art. And since he declared it as an art piece, we could get through the building codes very easily because we said, okay, art cannot be judged by building codes. This is breaking the rules. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I, uh, this was my last sentence. I'm losing my voice. Thank you for your understanding.